Check out NASA's new taxi. Today, the agency awarded contracts to a pair of companies to ferry astronauts to the space station. As Ron Charles explains, it's a giant leap for a new era of manned space flights. The two private spacecraft NASA has chosen for its next launch of humans into space from U.S. soil are both old-style capsules. The agency rejected this shuttle-like winged vehicle called the Dream Chaser. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden says he's confident the two companies the agency chose, Boeing and SpaceX, will meet a 2017 launch deadline. We are also confident they will be safe for NASA astronauts. To achieve NASA certification in 2017, they must meet the same rigorous safety standards we held for the space shuttle program. Since the space shuttle program ended in 2011, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Zero. Russia's Soyuz spacecraft has been the only ride to the International Space Station, now a touchy situation for the U.S. The commitment President Obama made to return human spaceflight launches to U.S. soil and end our reliance on the Russians. Boeing calls its capsule Crew Space Transportation, or CST-100. Upstart SpaceX's vehicle is called Dragon 9. The two private space taxis come with a whopping fare for NASA, an almost $7 billion contract. Some space observers say eventually Canada might be able to hail the private space taxis for its own astronauts. Perhaps even Canada uh, could, could send an all-Canadian crew up there, although uh, uh, right now we don't, we don't seem to be spending that sort of money. But first, NASA's contract requires each company to complete up to six NASA missions starting in 2017. Ron Charles, CBC News, Toronto. Of course, we know our science guy is all over this. Bob McDonald joins us from Victoria. So, Bob, why is NASA going the private route? Money? Well, yeah, Wendy, this is the handover from government science to private industry, the same way the airline industry did it after World War II, where they went from military to commercial airlines that were now flying. Space shuttles were great, but they cost a billion and a half dollars every time they flew. That was nuts. The private sector can do it a lot cheaper. Let's look at these two, two systems. First, the Boeing system. Uh, it harkens back to the uh, capsules. It's much simpler. Uh, it's just uh, the same shape as the one they went to the moon, except it's bigger. But still, when it comes in, into the atmosphere, it comes down like a bomb, uh, it opens up its parachutes and comes down in the old style, and instead of landing in the ocean, it actually uses airbags so that it can come down on the ground, although if they wanted to, uh, it can actually come down in the ocean too. So this is going back, is about 10 times cheaper than what it was to uh, the space shuttle. So here we see a very hard, sort of thumpy landing that Boeing is going to do. Now. That's the way they're doing it. Elon Musk and SpaceX have a similar concept. If we look at theirs after Boeing lands, we'll see that it's also a capsule, but it's a little more ambitious. It has legs. It can land on its own like a rocket. Both of these are to be uh, much, much cheaper than the, the way they did it before. And it's a competition, a little David and Goliath here. So we're, let's see what happens from here on. Any room for any space tourists in those things? Absolutely. These are the kinds of rockets. It's a business. If anybody wants to go into space, there's a hotel in the works. And if anybody wants to go up, these guys will build you a ride. Well, I bet you're going. Not sure I will. But <laughs> thanks so <laughs> much, minute. Bob. <laughs> okay, Wendy. Bob McDonald.